Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. I just wanted to say, firstly, I really appreciate the work that you've done and the amount of pleasure that you've given me personally and my family. And this is the first con that I'm bringing my son to, Christian. He's six. So he wanted me to come up and ask a question, mainly for Greg, uh, please. Grimlock is our favorite Transformer. And I was wondering if you could say hello to him in Grimlock's voice. And also, how much autonomy did you have in how you m composed the voice for Grimlock? I only had autonomy in the audition process. I, you know, I'm a big um, proponent of, of um, recognizing the collaborative nature of animation in general and honoring the artist who they provided schematics and his jaw was very tightly hinged, so I tightly hinged my jaw. You know, his muscle was very big, so I made myself big. Mm -hmm. These are things, these are freedoms that we have in voiceover that you can't possibly have on camera. You can be bigger than you are, you can be smarter than you are, you can be dumber than you are. You can be anything that you decide that you can be, and it's very freeing and it's uh if you really embrace it no one can see what you're doing in the booth mm -hmm. i ultimately i didn't need to do that but i did it at the outset right. so those things were within my control what was outside my control was everything on paul's side of the room and them going from the storyboard and the story bible and all of the things that they had to be true to and um you know, we ended up with some kind of perfect storm. I say that because look at the longevity of, of what was created and that new generations are being exposed to it and finding that the characters are so appealing and the shows uh, and scripts are so character driven that, that a new generation is finding their way back to it. Is the animation as sophisticated as CGI now? No, it's not, but it's got some wonderful magical not anime not animated but combination of both it, it's all in there so um all of that said um hello christian meet grimlock meet dinobot leader you have power too but not power like grimlock and me no kisser <laughs> thank you thank you Did you know in the restaurant they're serving a drink called the Grimlock? The I saw soup? it. Did I you see that? There's an Orion Pax, too. Very nice. I think it's, it's uh, double -header vodka there. and Clorox. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a chaser. Woo. Man. Woo. Can I just say one thing quickly? What Greg was talking about, just the mechanics of it, the collaboration between uh, uh, the voice actor and the artists and the writers. One of the mechanical parts of that is that when you go to audition for these shows they usually show you a drawing of the character and what you learn to do which is obvious is to look at the character's mouth to see how it might move to to guess how it might produce sounds and and when you figure that out you get an instant relationship to the artist who drew that character, and the artist would probably say, oh, that's it, that's the one. And I guess maybe that's the way they choose it, but it's, it was a nice little side effect. Of and that. there are writers who write, slave over breakdowns for animated characters as much or maybe even more so than they do for, for live action on camera characters yeah they're really uh, building and, the and of course the writer is is a crucial element of that collaboration but the final decision of who was cast for the characters that were toys would come from hasbro mm -hmm. wally burr would assemble the three that he liked the best maybe five and he'd ship them off to hasbro and they they'd tell us uh you know who was going to be that character? Wow, I didn't know that. Did you know that? I didn't. The, the, that's the part that's outside of our control. Yeah. I did know, when Wally called me personally, and he said, there's concern at Hasbro that uh, you turned in kind of a tonsil-busting uh, audition. They love what you did, but there's concern about whether you can sustain it. 
and maintain it. And I uh, essentially said, put me in, co coach. I'll, <laughs> I will not disappoint, and I'll figure out a way to, to wrap my, uh, my mouth around it every time. And, um, you know, I, I would say I'm a stronger actor and a better actor, voice actor uh, as a result of it. But uh, the goal is to exceed expectation. And if you're given that opportunity, you better be ready and you better be able to deliver everything that you did in the audition. Uh, there are some people who are really good auditioners uh, and may actually not be able to maintain and sustain, but it's crucial uh, because you don't know if that audition is for an episode or an ongoing character. So you better, you better realize it in three dimensions and be able to continue to do that. 